Honorable Minister for Climate Resilience, Environment, and Renewable Energy. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion. Honorable Minister for Climate Resilience, Environment and Renewable Energy. Mr. Speaker, I greet you, the honored head of this house. Mr. Speaker, if I were to ask that everyone within this house close their eyes for one minute and imagine the most valuable material thing that they own, I am positive that money, maybe sparkling jewels, a BMW, or other fancy vehicle may come to mind. But Mr. Speaker, what comes to my mind is our economy, the valuable machine that is the foundation of our nation. The CBI program value, generates valuable income for our economy, and in order for it to be properly utilized, we must target it to specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, it is undeniable that our environment is vital for economic development. And as a Minister for Climate Resilience, Environmental and Renewable Energy, Social and Community develop Development, Gender Affairs and Housing, I would like to recommend an integrated method in order to develop a communities that does not encroach on our valuable environment. Mr. Speaker, during the years of 2013 to 2016, the International Federation of Association Football, or as it's more commonly called here, FIFA, started a program hand in hand with the government in order to improve the infrastructure within our different parishes. They started with the pastures and parts of Grenada. Currently, for example, if you go to Fur in Sotez, you will find many new bleachers and bright stadium lights. These were put there in order to assist our athletes so they can perform at 100%, whether it be day or night, Mr. Speaker. I am proposing that we use the funds from the CBI program to make this change green. Solar energy. It is free and all around us. I am proposing that we purchase solar panels to place within our pastures and other facilities island-wide. This will reduce our carbon footprint and the strain that the cost of such ventures places on the government's purse strings. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, we can use the CBI funds to make our island even more attractive to prospective investors. When you think of the CBI program, one of the most popular citizens most people think of is the owner of the Silver Sands Hotels. But Mr. Speaker, I must ask, are there investments being built upon or are they devalued by the community that surrounds them? Mr. Speaker, we must build on our community to strengthen its infrastructure. We can introduce programs and projects funded by the CBI program in accordance with Section 11 of the Act proposed in 2013 in the villages of Grenada and use them to nurture our people. We can start with entrepreneurial classes. How many of our young people on the island, Mr. Speaker, have a desire to start a business, yet they lack not only the encouragement to do so, but also the technical know-how? We can further have even more skilled training programs. Mr. Speaker, we can offer carpentry, weaving, management classes, sewing, baking. The list is endless. 
By bringing these skills to a community level, Mr. Speaker, we relieve the mental and financial anguish that our citizens face. Because I cannot recall for you the many times as a member of St. Patrick's that whenever you need training or would like to advance yourself, especially as a young person, you will have to constantly struggle to pay a bus, to jump from St. Tess, to St. George's, and it's train it takes on our finances to do so. Mr. Speaker, these hosts are bundle of benefits for our, for our people. We can have the youth and the skilled members of the community, no matter their age, act as facilitators, which will increase employment and provide income. Now, this bundle of benefits comes in threes. We will, by doing this, we will have one, higher employment rates, two, an improvement in our labor force, which is already a scarce econo economic commodity. And third, we can use these programs to provide skill certification to our citizens. Mr. Speaker, if you told me as a young person, and especially as a woman coming from a poor household, that I would have equal opportunity to better myself and free classes right in my community center, I would jump on it in a heartbeat. I under, because I understand the value that such a program would hold for me. I don't expect to get rich overnight, but I can start small. For example, if I attend baking classes, I can start by selling my little cut, cupcakes, little slices of cakes in my community. As my skills improve from attending these classes, I could start decorating cakes, and this would be income that is going to aid my household and more income that will be put back into our economy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this would also help in providing after-school programs for many of our students. How many of our young people, due to the COVID pandemic, we have schools just trying to start putting back after-school programs in place. However, not all our students are able to attend due to where their high school may be located. Mr. Speaker, if we put these as after-school programs, we are teaching our young people to invest their time wisely, and we will engage our youth in meaningful activities. Mr. Speaker, additional work can also be done on our infrastructure. According to the Citizen by Investment Wise website, on government.gd, can I quote the statistic? Permission to quote the statistics, Mr. Speaker? Honorable member, permission has already been granted. Thank you. Open quote. Grenada has 1, 000, over 1,100 kilometers of road. Close quote. And Mr. Speaker, it is an undeniable fact that many of them are in poor, poor conditions. Would you, as an investor, create a business using prime real estate? However, the public roads leading to it are filled with potholes and your customers' teeth are chattering before they can even reach your establishment. Mr. Speaker, this is the value in the investment that our citizens have created. And we can use the, city, the CBI fund to end and future members' contributions to improve Grenadian communities and roads. Mr. Speaker, our planet is alive. And as its host, we must develop our society sustainably. We must utilize the funds and provide proper programs for our citizens at a community level, for our youth, for our elderly, for our world, and for our people. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for St. Andrew Northwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I offer the Honourable Members on the other side of the bargain. If in their following speeches they would stop telling lies about us and misleading the nation, we would continue to tell the truth about you, but would help you guide this nation. There are some politicians who accept this bargain and learn from it. However, there are some who create resolutions to try and hide from it. Hence, we are here today. Ladies and gentlemen in the gallery, members of parliament, Mr. Speaker, we are here today to discuss an issue of great importance to Grenada. The National Transformation Fund 
is of vital importance to Grenada. It is a serious and incredible source of funding that is not undeniable. However, my honorable members on the other side think that it is a viable source, the CBI, to increase revenue in Grenada. Now, Mr. Speaker, why is it that I'm including the National Transformation Fund along with the CBI? Because they are linked. All the revenue generated from the Citizenship by Investment Program, governed by the Act of 2013, of course, goes directly towards the National Transformation Fund. The NTF finances various projects in Grenada for the benefit of many industries, including but not limited to agriculture, tourism, and alternative energy. Now, Mr. Speaker, we have so much flexibility through this program. Why is it that we would like to limit it to certain sectors? Mr. Speaker, today, there are those who decide, who believe the revenue should be directed towards specific sectors in our economy. I must say, I am disappointed, but not surprised, at the short-sightedness of this approach. This short-sightedness is matched only by a lack of understanding for how our economy really works. Mr. Speaker, as a leader of the opposition, I will define the key terms of this resolution, setting the premise for our following arguments. We are here today to clarify what the learned members on the other side are so quick to dismiss, proving at the end that instead of giving certain individuals the keys to the NTF or several other initiatives in Grenada, we must change the locks. Viable in the context of our resolution today indicates that an entity is capable of doing what it is intended to do. Specific can be defined as definite, precise, or particular. Revenue can be defined as the total income generated from a given source, with the given source being the Citizenship by Investment Act. Sectors can be defined as a particular, a particular subdivision, which can be political, economic, or sociological. And finally, targeted can be defined as to be aimed at a particular place or people. Now, Mr. Speaker, being guided by these definitions, the resolution can be rewarded as be it further resolved that the total income produced by the Citizenship by Investment Act, governed by the Act of 2013, should be aimed at a particular place or people through a definite, precise, or particular sociological, economic, or political subdivision of society. I am baffled that we are even here today to discuss limiting the amount of flexibility we have through the NGF right now. That is like being a trust fund baby, unlocking it at 19, and then going ahead to lose it all before you turn 25 because you decided to invest in specific stocks or specific sectors. First, let me begin by highlighting the importance of the National Transformation Fund. According to a study done by the Caribbean Development Bank, countries such as Antigua, Barbuda, and St. Kitts and Nevis do have similar CBI programs, and the economies have been thriving. However, Mr. Speaker, what is the difference? Like, why, why should we focus on this? Because the flexibility that they have, first of all. And they direct their revenue to a similar national transformation fund. The NTF finances various projects here in Grenada for the benefit of many industries. Even as outlined in the 2023 budget, the NTF is intended to be, and I quote, a stable and predictable source of funding for various projects, end quote. This is crucial for the development of our growth as a nation. So why limit this stable and predictable source of funding to only specific sectors? For example, in Trinidad and Tobago, the Heritage and Stabilization Fund is a similar fund that has been used to fund infrastructure projects, such as the construction of the Piaco Airport or the Solomon Hawkeye, it's the Solomon Hawkeye Highway. These projects have not only improved the economic development of the country, they have attracted foreign investors, Mr. Speaker. They have increased, they have, they have increased transportation, mobility throughout the country. Mr. Speaker, moreover in Jamaica, the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica has been, has been created to manage the revenue generated from the country's oil and gas sector. The revenue generated from this sector is targeted towards similar infrastructure and social development programs. This has not only led to economic growth and development, Mr. Speaker, but it has also increased the resilience of the country to external shocks. In Grenada, 
the National Transformation Fund has been able to finance projects such as the construction of the International Airport and the renovation of the National Stadium. We know this. These projects have, Mr. Speaker, do I even need to say it? These projects have directly increased the economic development of our country. Additionally, the NTF has been able to finance the development of renewable energy projects, which has ultimately decreased our dependence on fossil fuels, which has decreased the level, the, the, the cost of electricity here in Grenada. Now, Mr. Speaker, let us not forget that today there are some individuals who, would, who think that targeting specific sectors is a better approach. I ask through you, Mr. Speaker, I ask my honorable members on the other side, why limit ourselves to a select few when we have the ability to benefit multiple sectors? This approach proves, Mr. Speaker, this specific sector approach proves that some individuals can either be ludicrous as a profession or ludicrous by nature. By keeping the revenue in the NTF, we have the ability, the flexibility, to allocate funds to various projects, such as investing in infrastructure and supporting small and medium-sized enterprises. Let's take, for example, other Caribbean countries who have implemented similar funds. Jamaica, for instance, has a Jamaica Social Investment Fund. The funds generated from this program is directed towards community-based programs meant to reduce poverty, increase social development, and also increase economic, economic growth. According to a study conducted by the World Bank in 2019, the GSIF has been successful in doing just that. Similarly, in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Speaker, the, the Community-Based Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program, or CPEP, it has been successful in creating jobs and increasing economic growth in the local community. A study done by the Interdevelopment American Bank, Mr. Speaker, it shows that the CPEP program has increased the amount of jobs in Trinidad and Tobago by 15,000 in Grenada here. The National Transformation Fund has been successful in supporting infrastructure projects and small and medium-sized enterprises. Mr. Speaker, even the budget for 2023, again, has allocated funds from the NTFR, and I quote, progress, programs to improve connectivity and accessibility within and between islands, and programs to support growth and development of small and medium-sized enterprises, end quote. These projects will not only increase economic development, Mr. Speaker, but overall they will increase the quality of life for Grenadians. They will increase the quality of life for the man who is selling in his trolley across KFC. I buy for him from time to time, to be honest. Mr. Speaker, let us keep the money in the NTF. So if needed, we are able to direct it towards these, you know, we are able to direct it towards these projects. But of course, there are some individuals here today who disagree because apparently to them, politics is a game, is the art of finding trouble everywhere, diagnosing it and applying the wrong solutions or simply doing what the resolution is proposing. Finally, I ask <laughs> through you, ask my honorable members on the other side, to consider the future of our nation. As we look towards a rapidly changing technological landscape and the rapidly increasing impacts of climate change, it is crucial that we invest, not only for ourselves right now, but we need to invest to create a sustainable future for our children and grandchildren. I would be having children and grandchildren. I don't know about my honorable members. By keeping the flexibility we have through the NTF, Mr. Speaker, we are able to we're able to invest in renewable energy projects, which will increase climate resilience, Mr. Speaker. By investing in renewable energy, we can not only reduce the carbon footprint here in Grenada, but we have the ability to decrease our dependence on fossil fuels, again, which we, which we know can be highly volatile in price. Mr. Speaker, I, I think, I'm thinking about the days when my brethren used to pick me up and drop me in town for $5, $10 gas in a corolla. This can't happen again. I ask you, my honorable members, do we want to limit ourselves to a select few sectors when we have the ability to benefit multiple? Do we want to limit ourselves to a select few sectors when we have
Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Leader of the Opposition, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, I'm almost finished with my speech. Why invest in certain sectors when we have no idea the return on investment that they can yield, Mr. Speaker? The choice is clear. Even a simpleton on a bad day would be able to realize and understand why what is proposed is terrible. But however, today, we don't have simpletons. We have the government on a Tuesday. Keeping the revenue in the NTF is a better approach, not simply because it's holistic, but because it's comprehensive, Mr. Speaker. By keeping the revenue in the NTF, we have the flexibility to invest and have a real and lasting impact in the lives of our Grenadians. Mr. Speaker, as I close, I've listened to two speeches already. And you know, it came to my mind, it's really true, because some politicians are like dappers. They need to be changed quickly and for the same reason. Thank you. Before we proceed, honorable members, just a reminder. A reminder that the first bell indicates that you have one minute left, and the second bell indicates that your time is up. Also, to the guests in the gallery, please remember to place all your phones on silent, or please turn them off. Thank you. Honorable member for the town of St. George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to start with a quote from the King James Bible, since according to the 2020 report on international religious freedom for Grenada, 90% of the 113,000 people of Grenada are Christians. Thank you for your permission, Mr. Speaker. The scripture reading will be taken from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17, which reads as follows. He who speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. End of quote. Mr. Speaker, the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, is not the viable means for government to obtain revenue. In fact, Mr. Speaker, two things happened when I read the CBI Act of 2013. One, my blood pressure rose, and two, I'd say a lot of mercy. Mr. Speaker, as my colleague had so righteously given a definition of viable for the purpose of further edification, a synonym for viable is suitable, which, Mr. Speaker, I argue today that the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, is everything but. To further elaborate my point, Mr. Speaker, let us critically examine the CBI Act of 2013. Let us look at Part 15, Section 1, which gives the minister responsible for citizenship, who is, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Prime Minister, the Chairman of Cabinet, the task of every six months to prepare a detailed report of applications made, denied, and granted. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, within 30 days of finishing this report, the Honorable Prime Minister has to produce that report to the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, the time has passed. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I wish to inquire of the Honorable Prime Minister, where is the report? Through you, Mr. Speaker, I... Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, is there any point of clarity? Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, through you, I have to ask the Honorable Prime Minister, how can you be so lackadaisical in your duty? Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister. It's time on a point of clarity, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. Order. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister must lead by example before he can rally his troops to form this which he swore to do. This is the people's business we are talking about, Mr. Speaker. The government will have to do better than this. Mr. Speaker, in conjunction with the scripture that I read earlier, through you, Mr. Speaker, 
I call on the government to have the testicular fortitude and outright admit that through the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI of 2013, criminals will be allowed to come to Grenada and also get permanent residence permits. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> let me give a lively description of the processes that will happen. Honorable Mr. Hapman. Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. May proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, let us continue to this examination. Section 8, Part 1, describes the committee. Now, the committee meets, they deliberate on an application that was made. And after that deliberation, Mr. Speaker, they recommend to the minister responsible for citizenship on their decision concerning that application. Section 2 of Section 8, Mr. Speaker, gives the minister the opportunity to either grant, deny, or delay for cause, and the committee, within 60 days of that decision, will then write to the agent of that applicant about the decision that was made concerning that application. Now, Mr. Speaker, part three of section eight, that is the nail biter. That is the hypertension giver, Mr. Speaker. It gives a category of people who theoretically would be denied citizenship. So let us look at the category of these people. Class A, they are the people who have provided false information on the application. The category B, they are those who do not have free pardons. Criminals, my name is speaker, who do not have free pardons. And also those who would have not spent more than six months in prison. Category C are those under criminal investigation. Category D, those who can potentially be a national security threat to be near to any country. Category E, those people who would be involved in activities that would bring disrepute to Grenada. And of course, category F, those who would have been denied a visa to a country which Grenada enjoys visa-free travel. Mr. Speaker, classes B, D, and E would be problematic to Grenada as they are contradictory to each other, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is almost ironic, sad even. Mr. Speaker, Class B, those criminals who are not supposed to get a free pardon. So that means that if a criminal does have a free pardon, they do qualify for Grenadian citizenship and the permanent residence permit. Shocking. Mr. Speaker, the other class that has to do with six months in prison. Mr. Speaker, think about this, you know. If you spend less than six months in prison. Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member. <laughs> no, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you. Mr. Speaker. So that means that. As long as a criminal spends less than six months in prison, you qualify for citizenship? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> that's like telling a rapist who wants to commit a rape, you could go ahead and rape, you know, as long as the intended victim is not older than six years old. Mr. Speaker, that is ridiculous. Mr. Speaker, when criminals come to Grenada, making Grenada a hotspot for criminals, and they engage in activities that could bring disrepute to Grenada. By the way, Mr. Speaker, that is what the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI of 2013, is supposed to prevent. Recall the definite viable. Honorable Prime Minister. I stand, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. No, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when Grenada becomes a hotspot for, for criminals. They engage in activities that would bring dispute to Grenada. And, Mr. Speaker, countries. Honorable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, stand on a point of clarity. 
Honorable Mr. Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. Before you proceed, Honorable Member, it doesn't seem like the member is willing to yield. Would you yield if anyone else stands on a point of clarity or order, sir? Yes, Mr. Speaker. You may. Okay, yeah. proceed. All right, thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, so when countries of the United States, they sanction our blacklist screen leader, that could negatively impact our national development and trade. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when Grenada... Honorable Minister for Climate Resilience. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do yield, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, um, the Honorable Member has stated that criminals will use, are using the CBI program to enter Grenada. Mr. Speaker, I would like to know the statistics that show this and who are the crim and what criminals have entered Grenada using the CBI program, Mr. Speaker. Honorable, Honorable Member for the Town of St. George, you may choose to clarify or you may choose to continue with your speech. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Speaker. I choose to continue with my speech. Because I'm sorry. Okay, so Mr. Speaker, Grenada, Grenada, when Grenada becomes known as the North Korea of the Caribbean, and we know, Mr. Speaker, should that happen, the honorable members on the other side of the aisle and the inner circle, they'll be the ones getting nice and fat, but the rest of the popular staff, Mr. Speaker. By observation, Mr. Speaker, I see a couple of them are inside packing on the punks. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister. Send another point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, let me bring your attention to what I'm called the guideline of this entire resolution. Mr. Speaker, nowhere in the CBI Act of 2013, which regulates the CBI program, is there the mention of completion of projects, investments? Yes, but nothing on completion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what good does that do? Mr. Speaker, the government is shooting blanks. Could I ask for more time? Three, three minutes? Honorable member, you are granted one minute to wrap up your speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Grenada needs to become pregnant with economic development and advancement, not phantom babies and empty promises. I don't know, Mr. Speaker. Perhaps the government is suffering from performance anxiety. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I wish to leave uh, some sage advice for the government as taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 14, which reads as follows. Thank you for your permission to go, Mr. Speaker. He that falsely boasts of giving it's like he caught the wind with no rain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before we proceed, I would just like to recognize the presence of Senator Neilon Franklin in our presence here today. Welcome, sir. Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export, Mr. Speaker, I do thank you for the privilege to make my contribution to this Honorable House. To you, Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge the Honorable Members on the other side. To begin with, according to cbi.gov.gd, in the timeline of August 2013, the Citizenship by Investment Act, also known as the Principal Act, was reintroduced by the government of Grenada, Kariku and Piti Matnik as a means of strengthening the country by creating economic growth to foreign affairs. The program is very easy to navigate and rich with benefits. A Grenada passport comes with visa-free access to more than 115 international and commonwealth countries, making it an attractive option. Mr. Speaker, the CBI program has been an easy source of revenue 
in our tri-island states that leads to economic development and plays a critical role in encouraging foreign investment in our country. Mr. Speaker, could you imagine that the Island of Spice have the 33rd strongest passport in the world? Mr. Speaker, to you, I will explain to the learned members on the other side on the resolution brought before the House. To shed light, Mr. Speaker, obtaining dual citizenship through a CBI program can invest the chances of building the wealth for our tri island states. The CBI program has played an effective, transparent, and Mr. Speaker, it's a direct role in foreign investment in the tourism sector and reduce employment and poverty rate. Hundreds of jobs are created in different sectors. To illustrate, $207 million was donated to the investment project funds from the period of January to September 2022, compared to $161 million for the same as for the same period of in 2021 as a means of creating jobs. Furthermore, the program gave individuals the opportunity to invest extensively and gain numerous assets that would generate high revenue in, in return in, in, on investment. Additionally, the Citizens by Investment Act has allowed access to medical care and other fundamental rights, such as the right to vote. In addition, Mr. Speaker, in addition, Mr. Speaker, the CBI program can in improve an individual life quality and provide an increase in mobility. Mr. Speaker, the CBI program is linked to many other sectors in our tri island state. Some of the sectors are agriculture, tourism, hospitality, construction, and the fishing industry. Did you know that the CBI, the Island of Spice, is considered to have one of the best CBI program in the world? I give us a minute to let this sink in. The CBI program has enhanced the quality of hundreds of employees and continue to generate farms for the citizens or the economy in Grenada during the widespread of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to an official of the Ministry of Finance, the Grenada Citizens by Investment Act, also known as the CBI program, had on approximately 150 million EC dollar from the period of from for the year of 2021, which represent an increase. Honourable in leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honourable member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, access denied. You may proceed. Which represent an increase of 40 percent when compared to the earnings from 2020. Yet again, the Island of Spice continue to beat its record. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the government can use this. Honorable Member for St. Andrew South East. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, access denied. The allocated revenue, Mr. Speaker, can be used by the governments of Grenada, Karakou, and Pitimatnik to, to invest in sectors such as tourism, construction, fishing, agriculture, and most importantly, our educational sector. By focusing on these sectors, we as the government can increase the number of crops being exported, increase international relationships, and mitigate against trade deficit and create economic and sustainable development, which will allow it, which will in return allow us to attract more investors. According to an IMF article titled, Offering Citizenship for Investment has been a win-win. The substantial inflow of funds from these programs can help boost employment and growth for some Caribbean states. Mr. Speaker, Grenada has been one of those Caribbean states and continue to excel. To you, Mr. Speaker, we as a government challenge the learning members on the other side to join forces with us. Mr. Speaker, we can't escape the fact that we all have dreams. A wise man once said, two hands is always better than one. 
We hope that the honorable members on the other side will be a part of our big, bold dream. A dream that is making a vision and creating a new vision for Grenada. In summary, Mr. Speaker, the CBI program is a critical element for our economy. The CBI program will give investors of the tri island state a timid future as it allows economic growth and sustainable development. By continuing this program, we are on our way of creating a brighter future for the generation yet to come and advance our economy. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I offer a hand to the honorable members on the other side. Let's work together to build our country, to make a difference to move Grenada forward by allowing and encouraging investment by allowing and encouraging the investors to apply to our CBI program. The sharing of ideologies and plans can be implemented. Most applications reportedly come from China, South Africa, India, and Nigeria, countries known for the millionaires. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, access denied. We can assure that we are not here to make we can assure you that we are not here to make a living, but we are here to make the world a better place. Honorable member for the town of Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I stand I rise on a point of order. The honorable member is reading. Honorable member, please refrain from reading in this honorable house. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we can assure you that we are not here just to make we can assure that we are not here just to make a living, but we are here to make the world a better place with finer hopes and spirit of achievement. Let me say this over to make it supremely effective. We can assure you that we are not here to make, just to make a living, but we are here to make the, the world a better place, full with finer spirits of hopes and achievement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of this Honorable House, please refrain from speaking across the aisles. Our mics are very powerful, and so the little discussions that you're having may come across in someone's speech. It may be better to write a note and pass it across to your colleague. Please be guided accordingly. Honorable member for the town of Grenville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It would be ill-advised of my honorable colleagues and I to stand in support of the resolution tabled that the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, is a viable means for gov government to increase revenue and that the revenue generated through the CBI program be targeted to specific sectors. In this regard, we stand in staunch, unequivocal opposition to this resolution. At the end of my presentation, Mr. Speaker, it would be pellucid how and why the CBI program as regulated by the 2013 Act, is not a viable means for generating revenue. The argument is twofold. Firstly, I would elaborate on the inherent weaknesses of the CBI Act of 2013. And secondly, I would highlight the external factors which threatens the viability of this program. The CBI program came into being in August of 2013, and it allows not only individuals, you know, but their entire family to obtain citizenship in Grenada after making an investment into the economy. The honorable members across the floor would try to convince you that the CBI program was the best thing out since sliced bread. But Mr. Speaker, do not be swayed by sensationalism. While we acknowledge that the CBI program may be generating revenue, it is our contention that it is not a sustainable means of generating revenue. Simply put, it is not viable. Mr. Speaker, the good book asks in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, and I quote. Honorable Prime Minister. I would like to stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. 
The good book asks in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, and I quote, For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? End quote. And while we are not here to argue the morality of the CBI program, it would be remiss of me to not mention that the citizenship by investment is in direct contradiction to the very essence and sanctity of citizenship. Mr. Speaker, there's so much more to being a Grenadian than simply buying an expensive passport and throwing a few dollars into the economy. I'm offended to say the least. In the words of Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, and I quote, Citizenship is the highest office in the land. It is not a commodity for sale. And the passport, is, the passport is the outward sign of the inward grace of citizenship. And that too should not be for sale. End quote. Mr. Speaker, an examination of the CBI Act of 2013 would reveal that it is an inherently weak foundation with vague provisions that jeopardizes its integrity. For, first and foremost, the qualifications for obtaining a, citizen, a passport by, citizenship, by investment, as outlined by Section 5 of the Act, is less than stringent. And the vetting process is not as thorough as one may think. Although Section 7 makes provisions for due diligence checks, under the 2013 Act, no interview, education, or management experience is required or mandated. Honorable Prime Minister. Stand on a point of clarity, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Further, it is not a requirement that the applicant has resided in the country prior to applying. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Tell me, you don't find this song like a washing foot and come party? Further, Tom, Dick, Harry, and even Tanti Ann could get a passport via these provisions. While these are advertised as perks of the program, is this really beneficial to us as a nation? To whom are we really opening our borders, Mr. Speaker? There is a high risk of unscrupulous individuals evading scrutiny and invading our precious Grenada. Honorable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm standing on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, the vision of the Grenada CBI program states that it was designed to attract foreign investment whilst also protecting our reputation across the globe. Isn't that ironic? How will we safeguard our reputation when the measures Guarding this, the program itself is not even foolproof. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, under the 2013 Act, applicants may make two types of investments. One, into the National Transformation Fund, or two, into an approved project in Grenada. It must be noted here that, the NTF, that via the NTF route, the applicant is only required to make a one-off payment. You are right. Bargain of the day. For only 150,000 US dollars, you get a Grenadian passport plus travel access as well as tax concessions. And for a little extra more, you could even get a hotel. Sounds like a buy one, get 30% off to me. Mr. Speaker, gone are the days when investors will actually expend time and effort into a project to make money. No. You could just buy your way into the economy, regardless of the profitability of the proposed project, Mr. Speaker. I'm no Gordon Ramsay, but I can assure you that this is the perfect recipe for the creation of white elephants that contributes nothing to our economic growth. I don't know about you, Mr. Speaker, but that doesn't sound like viability to me. Moreover, under the 2013 Act, investors stand to win and the economy loses. The reality is, many of these approved projects never get off the ground, or there is often no clear indication as to when they might. Meanwhile, the applicants already have their passports in hand, enjoying travel access. And think about all the potential income that is lost, Mr. Speaker, when these projects never get off the ground. Viability or naivety? Mr. Speaker, we cannot speak about viability without mentioning longevity and sustainability. According to the Henley Passport Index 2023, which is a global ranking of countries based on the travel freedom enjoyed by their passport holders, Grenada currently ranks at number 33. Commendable, really. 
Grenada boasts of having access to visa-free access to over 115 countries, including the People's Republic of China and the Schengen area. And Grenada enjoys access to the E2 visa treaty, which enables Grenadians to travel and stay long-term in the U.S., set up a business, and enjoy certain rights and privileges similar to that of a U.S. citizen. This is a major selling point of the CBI program. However, the saying, and I quote, every shortcut has a price usually greater than the reward, end quote, rings true as first world nations have started to move away from countries that grant citizenship by investment. In March of 2022, the European Parliament called on the EU to impose stringent background and vetting procedures to third world countries. Additionally, the Amigos Act, passed by President Joe Biden in June of 2021, introduced limitations to E2 visa eligibility, mandating that persons who obtain citizenship via this route must reside in a country for over three, for no less than three years in order to apply for an E2 visa. Further, discussions are ongoing with the United Kingdom and the European Union to eliminate visa-free travel to the Schengen area. If approved, this would affect the, mobi the mobility of persons from the Caribbean and ultimately reduce the attractiveness of our program. In light of these international events, through you, Mr. Speaker, I ask the honorable members across the floor to think about it. What happens when these larger nations revoke our special privileges to their nations? In fact, I'll spare them the brain power. Mr. Speaker, I crave your indulgence in granting me an additional three minutes to complete my speech. Honorable Member, I see that you are very passionate about your speech, and I'm certain everyone would like to hear the ending. Given that, I will grant you two minutes. Grateful, Mr. Speaker. I ask the honorable members across the floor, what happens when these larger nations revoke our special privileges? In fact, I'll spare you the brain power, since rational seems to be a scarce commodity on the other side. So I'll tell you, less privileges means less pull factors. Less pull factors attracts less investors. Less investors result in a dwindling of the program. And Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. So pray tell, does this sound like a viable venture to you? And as if that wasn't bad enough, the honorable members across the floor are proposing that the monies generated from this fragile venture be targeted towards specific sectors. It's almost as if the honorable members are insulting our fiscal intelligence. Shouldn't money be fluid within an economy rather than being strictly allocated? God forbid the day another COVID pandemic hits and we don't have a fund to dip into because the monies are so rigidly and strictly allocated to specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, I cannot, in good conscience, stand here while the honorable members across the floor run this country amok. The exploration of viable means of economic development is indeed prudent. However, like all shortcuts, the CBI program is an ill-chosen route. The CBI program, as regulated by the 2013 Act, while we understand the value to be accrued if done properly, there are also risks concerned, and from where I stand, given the structure of the 2013 Act, the risks far outweigh the value. The CBI program, as regulated by the 2013 Act, is not a viable, sustainable venture for generating revenue. Thank you. Before we proceed, I wish to recognize the presence of Senator Honorable John, Jonathan Lacrette in our presence today. Welcome, sir. Honorable Minister for Economic Development, Agriculture and Planning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The importance of investment for economic growth cannot be overstated. The relationship between investment, economic growth, productivity, and its subsequent effects on the economy is obvious. The Citizenship by Investment Program has been crucial in funding projects that makes regional sustainable development possible. The CBI program supports economic development, which is a crucial component 
that improve a quality of life for all our citizens, future and existing. Economic growth with less reliance on international aid. In small countries, the inflows to the private sector can have a sizable impact on economic activity. Take for instance, St. Kitts and Nevis and Dominica, the inflows have improved fiscal outcome, facilitated debt repayment, and splurged economic growth. Although the opposition leader, Mr. Speaker, downplayed The national research by the National Monetary Fund has brought to light the significant microeconomic impact of the CBI program on many small island states. In the Caribbean region, where five small states offer economic citizenship, the industry jumped from a 0% of regional GDP to a substantial 5.1% in 2015. Mr. Speaker, if that is not enough to validate the economic impact of the CBI program, I don't know what is. So let's take a look at the tourism sector. Whether or not we are satisfied with the imbalance of development favoring the tourism sector, one thing that is undebatable is that the hotel industry has been a catalyst for boosting the country's productivity, job creation, foreign investment, and in supporting businesses across the country. It has directly and indirectly contributed to every sector of this country. And also in growth in national output. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, I do not wish to. You may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, it has been an uphill battle getting our youths involved in agriculture. They said, you don't want to walk in a hot, 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 very, very hot sun. They said our hands were evolved to hold smartphones and scroll and through social media and not to do hard labor. It reminds me of the joke that newborn babies are being born with 10 years of experience with technology. So, as the fact that we're in the era of working smart and not working hard, as Minister also responsible for agriculture and ICT, our plan is to introduce agriculture to the era of technology. Far too long, we have been looking at agriculture from an innovative perspective we need to start looking at agriculture from an innovative perspective. By incorporating agriculture and technology, we are opening markets for investments in robotics, aerial mechanics, artificial intelligence, and agri-technologies to the agriculture sector. Mr. Speaker, which will help diversify the economy, reducing the country's vulnerability to a single industry. We could use modern innovation to solve real current problems we're facing in agriculture right now. Honorable member for the town of St. George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as any points of clarity? Honorable member, do you yield? Yes, I wish to yield. Thank you. Um, I wish to know exactly how will the funds from the CBI program go into these programs when there is no oversight as to where the funds will be going into. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable member, you may choose to answer the question. You may choose to clarify. You may choose to continue with your speech. I may not choose to clarify. As I was saying, we could use modern innovations to solve current problems in our culture right now. We could find, out, find technologies to curb pretty larceny. Find a way how to harvest our seeds and manure, 
to cut costs and to explore the high levels of chemicals in our food. Remote marketing and how it could be applied to implantation and exploitation. Mr. Speaker, when speaking about education reform, added smart farming and agri, added smart farming and agri technology to our schools curriculum and developing a job market to apply those skills is, in my opinion, the best way to get our youths involved in agriculture. We must, but we must first create an avenue for it. Not only have investments in agriculture and technology and agri-tech businesses increase, grow, increase globally, but the level of demand have also increased, Mr. Speaker. This is what the CBI program can do for agriculture. As minister, also responsible for economic development, I will be the first to say, the CBI Act of 2013 is not only a viable means for government to increase revenue, but it's a, necessi it's a necessary tool for economic stability and sustainability. During a global crisis, impending recession, and soaring inflation rates, as I say and my grandparents used to say and your grandparents used to say, Koko Shenpai, which means things bad. It is not the time to sweep the foundation, whether or not you agree, but it has been an important tool for sustainability. The famous saying, the famous saying the great Maurice Bishop used to say, when the capitalist, when the capitalist world catches pneumonia, we catch it, sorry, when the capitalist world catches a cold, small developing countries catches pneumonia. The aftermath of COVID, when most big powerhouse countries have not yet seemed to catch up themselves, it seems like, as all Green Agents will see, we catch a draft. That is what resili re resilience and sustainability looks like. It has left a footprint in our economy and subsequently into the lives of our people. And that is an undeniable fact. Mr. Speaker, may I be granted one more minute to finish my speech? Honorable member, your time is not up as yet. This is just the first bill. You may proceed. Although the opposition argument was quite emotional, the government's responsibility is to improve the quality of lives of all our citizens by any and all means necessary. Mr. Speaker, emotions cannot run a country. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not wish to yield, for Ms. You may proceed. Thank you. And I already reiterate, emotions cannot run a country. For the passengers on a ship, want his crew members and captain, fearful, prideful, doubtful, and hesitant during one of the roughest waters of all time? Or would the captain and crew members want their team with a plan? Mr. Speaker, can I be granted one more minute? Honorable member, you are granted 30 seconds to wrap up. Thank you. A plan that has a proven track record of working. Would they want a team that is ready to explore all viable means necessary to keep the ship afloat? The answer to that question is why, as Minister for Economic Development, Agriculture, Planning, Blue Economy, Creative Economy, Tourism, and ICT, I stand in full support of this resolution. <laughs> Before we proceed, I wish to acknowledge the presence of 
Honorable Ron Redhead in our presence today. Welcome, sir. Honorable Member for St. David North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, according to Mr. Patrick Campbell, CEO of Profitswell, and I quote, revenue collection is a means whereby government funds projects, end of quote. Collecting financial obligations from the public and the CBI program are public entities that the government uses to collect such funds from. Hence, the question before this honorable house, and I quote, be it therefore resolved that the CBI program as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013 is a viable means for government to increase revenue, be it further resolved that the revenue generated through the CBI program be targeted to specific sectors, end of quote. Mr. Speaker, based on our definitions and interpretations, the question before this honorable house today, we have concluded that the CBI program, program is not a, re a reliable means for any government to increase revenue, nor should the, the funds collected from the said program be relied upon the, be relied to fund specific sectors. Thus, Mr. Speaker, the revenue collected from such a program ought not to be used as a source for government to target specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, I endorse and adopt the definitions used by the Honorable Member representing St. Andrew Northwest. At first value, Mr. Speaker, the CBI program seems to be one with many benefits both for the government and applicants. However, as regulated by the Act of 2013, there are many inconsistencies and restraints in the program that I will highlight, Mr. Speaker, that will prohibit the program from successfully accomplishing this resolution's aim, which in this context, Mr. Speaker, is to increase a country's revenue and to fund specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, I stand resolute in my belief that the CBI program, as regulated by the Act of 2013, is neither a viable nor a reliable means for the government of Grenada to increase revenue and support economic development through specific sectors. In order to understand our perspective, Mr. Speaker, we must debunk our flaws within the resolution. Something that is viable is capable of doing what it is intended to do. What does this resolution intend to achieve? It is intended, Mr. Speaker, to increase revenue and then fund specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, based on the constructs of the CBI program, would it accomplish the same? According to the Global Residence Index, the process of Honorable obtaining Minister citizenship- for Infrastructure and Physical Development, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, based on the constructs of the CBI program, would this accomplish the aim of the resolution? According to the Global Residence Index, the process of obtaining citizenship by investment takes approximately three to four months. Short term, Yes, the program can fund certain projects. But long term, Mr. Speaker, since it only takes four months at most, there is no way that it can be sustainable. Three to four months is not enough time for any program to generate sufficient enough funds to support one sector. Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I was saying, three to four months is simply not enough time to generate sufficient enough funds to be sustainable for a government, a society, an economy. To give the CBI program so much responsibility, Mr. Speaker, is to give our society a false hope that all will be well, that ends well. The resulting lack of support to fund targeted projects 
and the negative impacts on the citizens' expectations, Mr. Speaker, will look like a slap in the face, in the face and promises of the people. Furthermore, the revenue generated through the CBI program itself is tourism-based in nature. Mr. Speaker, according to the Government of Guinea's list of approved projects for the CBI program, all of them for the development of tourism are for tourism. With a program that is already swayed to one industry in nature, it is not feasible for it to be the main sponsor for Grenada's economy. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, according to the CBI Act of 2013, Section 10, Subsection 2, in uh, order to qualify for the... Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. According to Subsection... 10, subsection 2 of subsection 10, in order to qualify for the grant of citizenship through the National Transformation Fund, an applicant must satisfy the following criteria, one of which is he or she must reside in Grenada for at least 14 days after obtaining permanent residence. 14 days, Mr. Speaker. 14 days. What major change, what major breakthrough, Mr. Speaker, can be done to our country's economy within 14 days? Applicants are not even required to stay on the island after this. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the government of Grenada lists this as a quote-unquote benefit. I don't even have to ask the question, for whom? Because it is quite clear, Mr. Speaker, it is quite clear. This leads me into my second point, Mr. Speaker, the National Transformation Fund. The National Transformation Fund, with which the money generated from the donations are placed, as prescribed by the CBI Act of 2013, can provide funding for various donation, various projects that can promote mobilization, implementation, and transformation, such as supporting small and medium enterprises, which can provide entrepreneurship and innovation, ultimately leading to economic growth and development. Mr. Speaker, this is proven by the International Finance Corporation that stated, and I quote, SMEs account for 95% of all firms and 35% of employment in the Caribbean and contribute to over 40% of GDP in some countries, end of quote. The Caribbean Development Bank, Mr. Speaker, further corroborates this claim as they state the SMEs account for over 90% of businesses in the Caribbean and employ over 60% of the region's workforce. Mr. Speaker, with the fund already proving to be effective, why risk separating the monies gained from the CBI program when there is no evidence showing that the funds are significant enough to support and sustain an economy? If it is working, Mr. Honorable Speaker, Prime Minister. Stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister, you may proceed. The Honorable Member spoke about... I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, a little hamster, so I'll come back once again. Honorable Member, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If it is working, there is no need to fix it. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the act that oversees the CBI program does not have enough regulation in place to ensure that the program is implemented, processed, and monitored effectively. Mr. Speaker, we know, for example, in the CBI Act of 20... Mr. Speaker, I'm asking for two minutes to finish my speech. Honorable Member, you are granted one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister shall establish a Citizenship by Investment Committee, which shall be responsible for processing any application for any license under this Act, and any application for, for, for citizenship by investment or permanent residence by investment. Mr. Speaker, essentially, 
The minister that is elected has all power over the CBI program. Mr. Speaker, if you are to rely solely on the judgment of the minister, without any repercussions and accountability, many will conclude that it is a recipe for disaster. Before putting such tasks on the CBI program, Mr. Speaker, we recommend that a re-evaluation of the act that governs the program must be done. In conclusion, through the various points of evidence brought to your attention, such as the CBI program not being sustainable enough to be considered reliable, the National Transformation Fund is already effective. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to acknowledge the presence of Ms. Andrea St. Bernard, an advisor to the government in our presence here today. Honorable Minister for Education, Youth Affairs, Sports and Culture. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying Education is one of the most important investments a country can make because it has the power to change lives. Our culture is our identity. Hence, we should use programs like the CBI program to invest in these sectors. Mr. Speaker, one of the requirements for the CBI program is that applicants may only make two types of investments to obtain citizenship or permanent residence. One, they must make a payment into the National Transformation Fund, or two, they must make a payment towards an approved project in Grenada. As my colleagues establish, the CBI program regulated by the CBI Act of 2013 is a viable means for the government to increase revenue. Mr. Speaker, as Minister for Education, Youth Affairs, Sports and Culture, it is my duty to demonstrate how the revenue generated through the CBI program can be used within my sectors. The government can use the CBI program to fund projects such as libraries island-wide, create events that focus on the different parts of our culture other than carnival, and most notably, how we can support the expansion of a digital economy. Mr. Speaker, as a young girl growing up, I only heard the word library. I never saw one or knew of a library in my parish. In fact, I found out that there was a library once upon a time when I wanted to create my own. Mr. Speaker, I am 23 years of age, and for most of, if not all of those years, a library in Sotel St. Patrick's has been closed. Mr. Speaker, we the government will not allow this to continue. This is why the funds generated through the CBI program via the National Transformation Fund will be used to help restore the libraries in our communities. Mr. Speaker, we are trying to make progress with our libraries because as Walter Cronkite rightfully said, and I quote, whatever the cost of our libraries, the price is cheap compared to that of an ignorant nation, end quote. Mr. Speaker, we do not want to have an ignorant nation. Mr. Speaker, these are the aspects. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not wish to yield. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, these are the aspects of our education. The revenue from the CBI program can bring to life. Let us use the CBI program to help invest in nation building. Libraries are needed to offer people an alternative. Books are a window through which everyone can explore and visit faraway places. Mr. Speaker, a library is more than just books. 
it, has, it is an atmosphere for learning. Now we have the opportunity to give our children that luxury. They are the future of tomorrow, so let us be wise and direct the funds of the NTF to specific sectors like this. Let us help them gain the knowledge they'll need starting today. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask this question. When was the last time? Honorable Member for the Town of St. George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's only point of clarity. I do not wish to yield. You may proceed. Honorable Member for the Town of Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of order. The Honorable Member did not wait for you to acknowledge her. You are correct. For future reference, please wait until I ask if you yield before. Oh, you sorry. Yield. You may proceed. When was the... Honorable Member for St. David South. Mr. Speaker, I write on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not yield. You may proceed. Thank you. When was the last time we focused on other parts of our culture, like literature and art? When last we engaged in Grenadian culture through the tradition of storytelling, stories of Laja Bless and Ligaru? When was the last time we heard our French Creole being spoken on our streets? Honorable Member for St. David South. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not yield. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, these are the aspects of our culture the revenue from the CBI program can transform. We can create significant events like a festival for the arts to bring those aspects of our culture alive. Mr. Speaker, at the same time, our new citizens learn about us and our culture. Alongside that, Mr. Speaker, we can start teaching our language, the Grenadian French Creole in schools. Lastly, we, the government, through the CBI program, can support the expansion of the digital industry and capitalize on its advantages as an employer by creating Honorable Member for the Town of Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, I do not. You may proceed. And capitalize on its advantages as an employer by creating flexible work rules and its enticing incentives for foreign businesses looking to enter the country. If we implement policies for these foreign businesses to invest in the youth by incorporating them into the digital rebranding, it will give them ample opportunities for growth and employment. Mr. Speaker, the CBI program is a viable means of investment. So we should use the revenue from the program to improve the sectors of Grenada, Cariku, and Pity Martinique. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Do you yield? I yield. Honorable Leader of the Opposition, you may proceed. The funds revenue generated from the CBI program would be directed to sectors when the resolution states specific sectors. Honorable member, you may choose to respond or clarify, or you may choose to conclude. I choose to continue. Okay. 
by investing in changes we desperately need, like library projects, cultural events, and digital expansions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for St. Andrew North, West, Northeast, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. A phrase I believe the majority of us here today are familiar with. That phrase usually is interpreted as, don't leave something alone, or don't attempt to correct, fix, or improve something that is already sufficient. In the case of the CBI Act of 2013, regulating that the revenue generated from the CBI program be placed into the National Transformation Fund is not broken. So please, let's not try to fix it. My colleagues and I stand firmly against targeting the revenue generated from the CBI program to specific sectors. Mr. Speaker, wasn't the National... Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, I do not yield, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, wasn't the National Transformation Fund established as a means of transforming Grenada's economy into one that is ever more prosperous and independent? This can be confirmed by the information from the government of Grenada's CBI's web, CBI website. It appears that the honorable members on the other side do not understand the goal of the NDF. It is astounding to me how they are even considering limiting their ability to take care of or to achieve some sort of development in every sector. Are the honorable members on the other side willing to neglect other sectors which holistically makes up our economy? I am sure we all can see that that is one terrible idea. With focus on projects in all sectors, achieving the goal of a more, with focus on projects in all sectors, achieving the goal of a more prosperous and independent economy can be feasible. Mr. Speaker, it is evident that supporting local government initiatives will promote community development and improve the quality of life for residents. For example, in Jamaica, the government's community renewal program has led to the construction of community centers, health clinics, and improved water and sanitation systems in underserved areas, leading to improved health outcomes and increase in access to services. With the NTF there, we can support initiatives similar to, to this initiative that the C, the, um, sorry, the, the Jamaica took up. We can support that in St. Andrews Northeast, my constituency, which will in turn have a positive impact on community and improve community development and improve the well-being of residents. And I'm 100% sure that the other communities will enjoy the privilege of, of having the National Transformation Fund to, pro, to, pro, to promote similar projects in their, in their communities. And you want to know something, Mr. Speaker? Our neighbors over in Jamaica are aware of the development that is needed to be done in all sectors. On the Jamaica Country Program website, under the Jamaica Country Program tag, it was stated, and I quote, transformation and innovation is needed in all sectors. However, these transformational, transformational impacts that we desire cannot be led by the public sector alone. We need participation from the private sector and civil society. In all of this, access and availability to significant funds becomes a priority. End of quote. Let's go back to the last sentence. And I quote, In all of this, access
access and, abil and availability of significant financing becomes a priority, end quote. I don't know, but that kind of seems like what the NGF is there for, don't you think? Our neighbors can't see this. So to me, it seems like the honorable members on the other side are in ignorance of the facts. Also, Mr. Speaker, development of the tourism sector will greatly contribute to economic growth of, this, of the islands. According to the World, Health, World Tourism Organization, tourism is one of the most dynamic and fast-growing sectors globally, and the Caribbean is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. By keeping the revenue generated from the CVI program in the National Transformation Fund, we can invest in, a tourism, development, in tourism development projects in our communities, such as improving infrastructure, development, developing culture and ecotourism, and promoting the islands as unique and attractive tourist destinations. By doing so, we can create jobs which will, which will for sure boost our economy. What I want to know, Mr. Speaker, through you, is the government just going to drop tourism like that, the tourism sector like that? From the time that I've been here listening to speeches, I haven't heard of any plans for the other sectors like tourism. So what are we going to do? Just just drop one of our major sectors like that? Mr. Speaker, if I can only peek into the minds of the members across the aisle, I am sure I could tell you what they are thinking. They're probably thinking, oh, development in this sector will bring this benefit. Development in that sector will bring this benefit. <clears throat> but wait, were the people of Grenada, Caricou, and Petey Martinique even considered doing this decision making? Were they? What they are failing to tell you is that support that what they are failing to tell you is that supporting the chosen sectors would use up all the money that is generated from the CBI program. So we are we just neglecting sectors now? Okay. With no consideration for the persons under those sectors left out of your master plan? Hmm. All right. <laughs> so much to say, but let's not go there. If I were to start, I wouldn't be able to finish now, to be honest. But I am going to say, think about it. Development in, the ag development in the agricultural sector can result in a strong revenue source for our economy. Development in the healthcare sector will improve the quality of life of our people. Development in the education sector will help, help the building of human capital. There are so many benefits from investing in all sectors. So many on a community level and on a larger scale. Our economy, our economy will greatly benefit from it. And this will directly affect the well-being of our people on the mainland Grenada, Caribou, and Piti Martinique. And that, Mr. Speaker, is what you call economic development. Mr. Speaker, we cannot afford... Mr. Speaker, I ask ever so kindly of you that I be granted one minute and 30 seconds to conclude my speech. Honorable Member, you are granted one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we cannot afford to miss out on economic opportunities and community benefits that investing in projects in whatever sector it may be can bring. Honorable Thank Prime you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member. I send on a point of order. It seems to me that the Honorable Member is reading. Honorable Member, if indeed you are reading, I wish to remind you of the orders of this house. There's no reading permitted. Okay, I did. Understood, Mr. Speaker. Okay, proceed. As I was saying before, I was interrupted. By keeping the revenue generated from the CBI program in the National Transformation Fund, we can invest in the future of many communities in whatever sector it may be 
and ensure a, sus um, ensure a sustainable and prosperous, fu prosperous future for all. What is that? The overall goal of the National Transformation Fund. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I would like to put the minds of the honorable members on the other side to the test. Why move from something that makes so much sense to something that would dig a hole and bury our economy in, the, in it? The NTF is there and it is working sufficiently. So please, let's not try to fix it. Thank you. Honorable Minister for Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mr. Speaker, and through you, the members of this parliament. Mr. Speaker, can you imagine the development of Grenada's economy without the CBI program being in the mix? If yes, I can assure you that we will miss out. We will surely miss out on all the benefits to be had indeed. Mr. Speaker, before I proceed any further, let me establish by quoting, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Psalm 27 verse 1. And we should remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. End of quotes. In this case, Mr. Speaker, as the Minister responsible for religious affairs, I do believe that the full potential and success of the CBI program are directly connected to the help of God. Regarding our religious beliefs as a country, Grenada is known or has been deemed as a Christian nation with approximately 90% of the population practicing Christianity. This being said, as a government, we acknowledge the sovereignty of God and that with Him, all things are possible. Hence, we commit the well-being of the CBI program to God so that He can, so that in all our endeavors, He can instruct and guide us with His divine wisdom, which will ultimately result in an increase in revenue to bolster the economy. Mr. Speaker, I am also responsible for the Ministry of Health and Wellness, one of the key sectors that will be benefiting from the CBI program. We as a government have clung to the notion that health is wealth. In this case, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will seek to further promote Grenada through the brand name Pure Grenada as a means of captivating potential investors regionally and internationally. Pure Grenada? Yes, Mr. Speaker, Pure Grenada. God has made everything beautiful in its time, and this certainly includes our trial and state of Grenada, Kariku and P.T. Matnik. From the north to the south, Honorable from the Leader east, of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not wish to yield, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You may proceed. From the north to the south, from the east to the west, 360 degrees of pristine nature, wildlife, and abundance of organic food. Please let me follow expound, Mr. Speaker, that one of the key factors that, contrib that contributes positively to our health and wellness is the environment in which we live. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, our beautiful trial and state can, can be used as a reference point to, for attracting potential investors through the CBI program targeting specific areas such as the personal health and wellness 
for the financial investments in return. Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt that Grenada is indeed a paradise and is a haven for tourists. Honorable member for the town of St. George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in a point of clarity. Honorable member, do you yield? I do not wish to yield, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt that Grenada is indeed a paradise and a haven for tourists from all over the world. Please allow me to highlight a few places that can be used as selling points to attract potential investors under the CBI program to our beautiful trial and state. In the parish of St. Patrick's to the north, there are hiking trails that lead to the top of Peter with breathtaking panoramic views and abundance of fresh air. Many coastal islands and the renowned Rivera National Park, comprising of a total of 450 acres, are visible from there. In St. John's to the west, Mr. Speaker, there is a beautiful Concord waterfall nestled deep within the mountainside. In St. Andrews to the east, there is the sublime Mount Camel waterfall boasting a height of over 70 feet, which is also considered the tallest or the highest waterfall in Grenada. In St. George's to the south, there is the world-renowned Granans Beach, approximately two miles of white sand constantly kissing harmoniously with the be beautiful blue, blue, blue Caribbean Sea. In Kariku, there is the Kariku Museum, built with old world style architecture design. Many colonial artifacts and devices are on display there. Mr. Speaker, let me conclude by stating that the CBI program can be a major, a major generator of revenue for our beautiful Trilan state of Grenada. Given that God is placed at the helm and good governance prevails. Honorable member for the town of Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable member, do you wish to yield? I do not wish to yield, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You may proceed. The CBI program can positively affect our standard of living from an economic, social, and cultural standpoint, amongst others. The CBI program is a stepping stone on which our economy can lead to attain the necessary transformation that is much needed at this time. I have now come to the end of my speech. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable member for St. Andrew South East, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want everyone in the room to internally answer these questions. What is a home? What does home mean to you? Are you proud to live here in Grenada? Is home a place of comfort? Do you feel loved here? Are you safe, sheltered, protected? Home is a place where you feel important, valued, and you don't expect to be exploited. And it nourishes you, it equips you to be successful in life. Grenada is a luxury destination and it attracts investment. But this is an investment in our home. Mr. Speaker, I've taken the liberty to elaborate what home means to the Grenadian people so that the honorable members on the other side do not forget for a second that the price tag we have placed on obtaining citizenship by investment is an investment in our home. Don't think for a moment that the amount of 150,000 US dollars represents the worth of our people. It is simply a gesture done in good faith, granting the rest of the world an affordable opportunity to call Grenada their home. Mr. Speaker, we can all appreciate the revenue brought in by the CBI program. However, it is not viable for increasing revenue as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013. 
My colleagues and I have found several flaws with the act, but permit me to expound on one pivotal error, which can have devastating effects on the reputation, diplomatic relations, and economy of this country. There is no established clause in the act or procedure for the revocation of citizenship. Let the honorable members on the other side get confused. I'm not speaking of the denial of citizenship to an applicant. The importance of this clause stems from the understanding that there are persons who can hurt the reputation of this country. While some countries have restrictions on certain nationalities who are eligible for citizenship by investment, Grenada has no such restrictions. We allow individuals from high-risk countries such as Russia and Afghanistan, who are under heavy scrutiny from the west of the world, to be eligible for citizenship by investment in our home. The reputation of a country shapes its diplomatic relations with other world nations. And we must take action to protect ourselves against any investor who poses a risk to the security of our reputation. In 2014, the Canadian government discontinued visa-free travel to St. Kitts and Nevis nationals due to concerns with their CBI program. Now, Grenada has already had a similar encounter in 2004, where the Canadian government discontinued visa-free travel to Grenadians. To further avoid hurting their dim diplomatic relations with other nations, St. Kitts and Nevis revoked the citizenship passport of citizens from their CBI program due to their involvement in criminal activities. We too must take action to protect the integrity of our immigration system and can amend the act to include revocation so that our citizens can continue to look forward. Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a, plan to, uh, a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, or Honorable Member, because I would have just said that St. Keats and Nevis would have taken back their citizenship from a previous um, perpetrator of bringing down their citizenship program. However, in our 2013 Act for the CBI program clearly states that the government of Grenada does also reserve that right to take back the citizenship as well as any investment made in the Act itself. So what is it exactly she is trying to reform? It appears you weren't listening or you did not read the act because it speaks to the denial of an applicant, but not the revocation. We must take action to protect the integrity of our immigration system and can amend the act to include revocation so that our citizens can continue to look forward to visa-free travel to other countries. There's a quote by William S. Barrow that I'd like to state. If you build, and it says, if you build a good name, eventually that name will be its own currency. No, the International Monetary Fund has a good name. The United Nations has a good name. The World Bank, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, and the European Union all have good names. These organizations are so powerful that their names are like currency itself. These organizations are globally respected. Their policies, opinions, and research findings have the ability to shift world focus, and it can change the trajectory of CBI programs across the globe. And Grenada is no exception. They can impose sanctions on Grenada and even blacklist Grenada for varying concerns with the CBI program. Actions are already being put in place by these powerful organizations to deter the use of the CBI program because there is an inherent risk of financial security that CBI carries to other nations. And my colleagues before me highlighted this. The OECD has a published list of potentially high-risk countries to the integrity of common reporting standards, CRS. And that is because of CBI programs. Grenada, sadly to say, is on that list. Mr. Speaker, a program so volatile to being downgraded in such a shameful way 
cannot be entrusted to upkeep a sector within our economy. If we are overly dependent on this program, it can cripple our economy. The entire world would hear of it and respect would be lost for this country. As we approach 49 years of independence, I want to continually boast in my national pride. And I want the generations after me to continually boast in the national pride of being independent. There's a song so proudly used by our Grenada Tourism Authority. It's entitled, This is Home, and it's written by Sabrina Francis. I would like to state a few lines, just a few. Stepping off the plane, it's so easy to breathe again. Life in the big city has finally took its toll. It's been so long, but I'm finally home. What better place to rest my weary bones on this beautiful island? The song ends with the lines, and I love it. It says, Sweet Grenada, this is home. CBI citizens are not mandated to live here, but for many of them, this song is their reality. But for those of us living here, we are aware how sweet a home Grenada is, and we don't have to take a plane to experience it. The real test of the program lies in whether the government can be proactive, creative, and smart enough to use the revenue to invest in areas that can contribute to Grenada on a whole. The revolution presented seems like a plea for help from the honorable members on the other side, how to effectively manage the resources of this country. Not to worry, my colleagues and I stand ready to prevent an economic downturn due to poor financial management. For the past 10 years, the program has been in operation. The funds in the CBI goes into the NTF, and from the NTF, it is used for government-approved projects. We support this. These projects tend to benefit nearly all sectors within the economy because the money required to sustain them, a program is much smaller than it is to sustain an entire sector. I want to pause a little bit for transparency and diplomacy because there seems to be a failure to yield to answer. Mr. Speaker, permit me two minutes to wrap up my speech, please. Honorable Member, you are granted a minute 30 seconds to wrap up. Thank you. There seems to have been a failure to yield to answer questions that this nation needs answers to. So I would like to clarify in the room that the revenue earned from CBI in 2022, according to the statistics put out by the Ministry of Finance, is approximately 110 million EC dollars and not as highly inflated in the speeches as 115 million dollars. Additionally, what is the formula of the government in distributing the $110 million to the five sectors, the five sectors only that I've heard so far from the CBI program? What is your formula? Tourism alone, although they said it's a burden, the budget presented in 2022, it carried over 18 million estimated in expenditure. Finance, which was one of the sectors they highlighted, 75, $77 million, approximately, in the budget for 2022, and we only have $110 million. So what is your formula? How are you going to spend the nation's money? We need an answer to that. We can provide you with solutions, you know. According to the Caribbean Development Bank, small and medium-sized enterprises account for approximately 95% of businesses and 50% of employment in the Caribbean. By providing support and resources to these businesses, we can almost guarantee that all sectors in the economy would benefit. There would be an encouragement for entrepreneurship and job creation. I thank you. Honorable Minister for Legal Affairs, Labor and Consumer Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Citizen by Investment program is an undeniable asset to Grenada in terms of viable income and for development. Speaking as Minister for Legal Affairs, Labor and Consumer Affairs, I will acknowledge that there are some concerns regarding the program. I, as a humble servant of the people, will do my best to quell these concerns so that we can move forward 
with confidence in reaping the rewards of the Citizen by Investment Program. Relating to the Grenada Citizen by Investment Act of 2013, there is a detailed and well planned out process for the application, processing, and granting of those hoping to become citizens of our country. Law is good governance. Just so we have natural laws, such as physics, which apply to concepts such as gravity and momentum for movement, in such a way, we refer to the legislation of Grenada for our protection, guidance, and productivity. We, as a government, are wary of obeying our laws and providing the framework for stability, security, and justice, as we are excited by the prospect of really gaining revenue to invest in the future of our triad and state. While it may seem that the honorable opposition would have us as a government being so needy that we would immediately provide anyone with a permanent residency or passport, the Citizen by Investment Program demands necessary time and due diligence to discern whether applicants are appropriate or not. The Grenada Citizen by Investment Act of 2013 elaborates established criteria of who qualifies to be citizen by investment, vetting applicants, cross checks with local agents for who provide consultation for CDI, and the validity of those same local agents, and what should be done if the applicants or local agents are falling short in credibility or validity. The process is also maintained not just by the minister, but by an appointed body that answers to the minister in charge, the Citizen by Investment Committee. To maintain transparency as stipulated by the Act, the minister would also periodically throughout the year, provide information to the Grenadian Gazette, which is available, with information such as the names of all local agents and revocation of any licenses of these local agents or permanent residency or citizenship status. Also to be published would be the approval of projects and entities involved for the purposes of investment in accordance to the Act as well as notifying the committee. And Mr. Speaker, with permission granted, I will quote from Act 2013, Section 15, 1, and I quote, the minister shall every six months on the prescribed dates prepare a report containing the prescribed information on the applications made, granted, and refused under the Act, and shall, as soon as practicable, but not later than 30 days after the completion of the report, cause a copy of the report to be laid before the House of Representatives." End quote. This is transparency. Our legal structure, reputation, and policies and political ties, these allow us as a nation to have many benefits that we cannot afford to compromise. Therefore, the Citizen by Investment Program is a secure and stable, is secure and stable, and we do not want to break any laws or accept any criminals or compromise our status. Benefits attracting CBI applicants include visiting 147 countries around the world visa-free, fully funded scholarships to British universities, and favorable tax advantages. These are all enticing and a product of our legal structure. Honorable member for the town of Grenville. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable member, do you yield? I do not. You may proceed. Having said that, I will now continue and just make a short point that yes, there are risks maybe involved, as with everything, 
But one of the major responsibilities of legal affairs is to scrutinize, monitor, and update the laws of Grenada so that we can always remain secure and protect our people and remain productive. I will now continue to speak uh, regarding the ministry, ministry of Labor. How can citizen by investment help our labor force? The Ministry of Labor has a mission, and I quote, of providing labor management services with high ethical and professional standards to all stakeholders, end quote, and is driven by the vision, and I quote, of being the leading public service organization in the delivery of labor management services, end quote. The National Transformation Fund may be approved to provide training to our labor force. Mr. Speaker, even better than this, the fund can also provide help to strengthen seed capital for new local Grenadian agencies suited to developing our same labor force. This can range from developing soft skills such as communication, interpersonal skills, and flexibility which are leading and widely demanded soft skills in the world today. It can also further develop acquired technical skills, such as managing newer or more efficient technology, tools, or software programs. It can also be used to help us with advanced management to remain competitive in our rapidly developing world. Zoom and COVID come to mind as possible past examples. We want to maintain that our labor force is prepared. So our labor force will, only, not only, inc will only increase from citizen by investment, but not just from the manifestations of projects, etc., from the National Transformation Fund, but from any potential businesses these citizens by investment may come and do after becoming a part of our Grenadian family. An example would be our, our branch of the prestigious Silver Sands Hotel that was launched by a citizen by investment. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the citizen by investment program is one that is protected by a robust legal act that ensures security, entices applicants and facilitates warm relations and benefits from countries around Grenada. Mr. Speaker, may I have one minute to wrap my speech. Honorable Member, you are granted 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Legal Affairs Department is always looking to maintain our integrity, Mr. Speaker. We are always scrutinizing and contemplating updates to our laws to remain relevant, safe, and productive. When the time comes, an updated, I'm sorry, when the time comes, we, can bring the act to the Honorable House for consideration to maintain and further strengthen the integrity, safety, and attractiveness of Grenada and her people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for St. Andrew Southwest, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you here today to oppose this resolution and to argue that, by this, by, and to argue that the CBI program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, should not be used to target specific sectors of our economy. By using the revenue generated through the Citizenship by Investment Program to target specific sectors, the government may overlook other sectors in need of funding which may lead to other sectors receiving more funds than others. Mr. Speaker, the government may overlook sectors in need of funding and development. One example of this is St. Kitts and Davis, which heavily relies on the CBI program. According to Citizens International, despite the revenue generated from the program, the government has focused on using the revenue to, de to develop specific sectors, such as real estate and tourism. Mr. Speaker, this can lead to unbalanced development of our sectors. We are already seeing some of the vital sectors in Grenada struggling, and they are constantly experiencing a decline. For example, 
the agricultural sector has seen a decline, where there is a reduce in the market for agricultural products and a decrease in the number of persons involved in the agricultural sector. And as a result, the farmers of St. Andrew's Southwest and the country as a whole is continuing to pay the price. However, Mr. Speaker, the government ignores the decline and the cries of the many farmers and workers in the agricultural sector and proceeds to invest heavily in other sectors, which can lead to the neglect of the agricultural sector and other vital sectors. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if the honorable members on the other side have learned anything from the last pandemic, but if it's one thing I have learned is that we must grow what we eat and eat what we grow. And the only way we can do that is ensuring that the agricultural sector and all the other sectors are equally developed. Mr. Speaker, the pandemic has also taught us another very important lesson, which is we should ensure that all the sectors are operating at the same level, not one way above the other. It shouldn't be a case where if one sector fails and revenue from it drastically decreases, then the country is on a standstill. It shouldn't be a case where if one sector fails, the country cannot move and cannot operate as normal. No, Mr. Speaker. That is why we should, we should invest in all sectors and ensure that all sectors are operating at the same level, where in the case of an emergency and one sector fails, the country can fall back on another and continue to operate as normal. Mr. Speaker, by targeting the revenue generated through the CBI program to specific sectors, the government may also overlook other sectors or other areas that have the potential to generate significant revenue and create jobs such as small, medium-sized enterprises. According to the Caribbean Development Bank, small, medium-sized enterprises account for over 90% of businesses and 30% of employment in the Caribbean. By providing support and resources to these businesses, we can encourage entrepreneurship and job creation, which will lead to economic growth. Instead of targeting the revenue generated through the CBI program to specific sectors, the government should take a comprehensive approach that takes into account the needs and potential of all sectors. A comprehensive, a comprehensive approach should also include investing in small, medium-sized enterprises, health, agriculture, education, and all the other sectors. Because all the sectors, not just a specific number of sectors, have the potential to generate significant amounts of revenue and create jobs. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, the government should also consider implementing a sector-specific approach where each sector is given the necessary resources and support to reach its full potential. This will lead to a sustainable and well-balanced development across all sectors. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, targeting the revenue generated through the CBI program to specific sectors could lead to unbalanced development of sectors, where some sectors receive more funding than others which may lead to the neglect of other vital sectors. A comprehensive approach which takes into account the needs and potential of all sectors, not just a specific few, but all sectors, would be more likely to achieve sustainable economic growth for Grenada. I urge the government to consider these suggestions and work towards a comprehensive and sustainable approach. I thank you. I wish to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Ian Thomas, an advisor to the Ministry of Youth, and the presence of Ms. Colleen Perriman, who is the Assistant Youth Coordinator in our presence here today. Honorable Minister for Mobilization, Implementation, and Transformation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to greet you and your team. I wish you all the best, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I stand in full support of the resolution that has been read by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance today, Mr. Speaker. And the Citizen by Investment Program, Mr. Speaker, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, Mr. Speaker, has significant benefits, Mr. Speaker, to both our country and the potential investor seeking the citizenship, Mr. Speaker. Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, and it is through this program that we as citizens benefit from the potential investors' investment and they receive citizenship or permanent residency in our beautiful country, Mr. Speaker. It is the Citizen by Investment Program, Mr. Speaker, that brings much needed foreign investment to our country, Mr. Speaker. These investments, Mr. Speaker, are used to enhance our lives, Mr. Speaker. They are used to enhance our country, to enhance the livelihood of our people, Mr. Speaker, and to create a more sustainable way of living for all of our citizens, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, projects like the Range Development Project in Las Vegas, Mr. Speaker, is an example of one of the projects that the government Honorable Member for the Town of St. George. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Rise on the point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Yes, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Um, thank you, um, Honorable Member. Um, could you be specific in saying how the CBI program uh, positively affects the lives of citizens? You just made a big statement of being specific. Please be specific. Thank you very much. Honorable member, I too would like to hear those specifications. If indeed you have them, you can list them. If not, you may proceed. Mr. Speaker, I do not have them, and I wish to proceed with my speech. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the CBI program has also increased our cultural diversity as individuals, Mr. Speaker. As individuals, sorry, from more than from countries all over the world, Mr. Speaker, Honorable can apply Member for, for St. Andrew Northeast. Mr. Speaker, rise on a point of order. It seems as though the Honorable Member is reading. Honorable Member, this issue has been addressed on a number of occasions in this sitting already, and uh, I would like to reiterate that there is no, absolutely no reading in this Honorable House. So please refrain from doing so. You may continue. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Citizen by Investment Program has also increased our, our country's cultural diversity, Mr. Speaker. The, the program, Mr. Speaker, it allows for persons from all different countries, Mr. Speaker, to apply for our citizenship. And the cultural diversity that I speak of, Mr. Speaker, it has led to a more vibrant, Mr. Speaker, and dynamic society, which has also boosted our healthcare system, our education system, and certainly impacted our Honorable culture Member and other communities. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, please proceed. No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, according to a national address done by the Prime Minister, our government has gained an increased... According to our a national address, Mr. Speaker, held by the Prime Minister. The CBI program in, in the recent past months has increased the revenue. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? I do not yield, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, according to a national address by the Prime Minister, in the recent past months, our revenue has increased, our revenue from the CBI program has increased by 40% as opposed to the, to the previous year, Mr. Speaker. 
Our country has significantly been benefiting from those programs, and the government intends to maintain... Honorable Member for St. Andrew South East. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you wish to yield? Do not yield, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, before you proceed, if it will be a bit more comfortable for you to present your speech, you are permitted to lift your paper just a bit so you can deliver better. You may proceed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I firmly believe that the Citizen by Investment Program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, is in fact an important tool for our government to attract more investments and to gain access to new opportunities and increase revenue. Mr. Speaker, and these programs can also help to build more prosperous and stable society for all of our citizens. I thank you. Honorable Member for St. David South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak in opposition to the resolution brought forward before this Honorable House. To begin, I thank my colleagues for laying such a solid foundation upon which I will continue my delivery. In an environment dominated by larger nations, small islands have utilized citizenship by investment and other innovative strategies to survive. Consequently, national citizenship has become less of a bond between individual and state. The sale of passport is merely one manifestation of this irreversible commodification of citizenship. Mr. Speaker, I heard Grenada's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development make public pronouncements in a certain place about the revenue generated from the CBI. He stated that Grenada's CBI revenue provided 49.2% of capital funding in 2022. A significant portion of these fundings were used to repay international creditors and fund capital projects as well as pay debt. Esteemed colleagues, while we recognize this program's benefits, particularly for small island, we must not be naive to the risk factors associated with this program. Permit me to highlight three factors, Mr. Speaker, threatening and which questions the program's viability. Number one, reputational damage. There's a saying that goes, Peter pays for Paul and well, Paul pays for all. The CBI program can impact nations in the very same way. Mr. Speaker, on November 8, 2022, in an article titled, Debunking Myths Against Myths, the author made reference to such. An Indian national who was arrested for a $250 million scam, Mr. Speaker, applied for a St. Kitts and Nevis passport. He was initially rejected, but later approved. Years down the line, Mr. Speaker, that individual was arrested. Mr. Speaker, the whiplash St. Kitts and Nevis faced from this CBI national scandal is far greater than a son or daughter of the soil. Reputational damage, Mr. Speaker. Let us walk down memory lane if you wish, Mr. Speaker. Like the CBI program, over 40 plus offshore banks attracted foreigners, particularly Americans and Canadians, with similar provisions to the CBI program. This number plummeted to less than five in three years, Mr. Speaker. So through you, I would like to ask the honorable members to do the math. Mr. Speaker, the Ponzi scheme was eventually brought down by the FBI and the IRS, and Sweet Grenada was backlisted. In an article published on May 31st, 2008, investigative financial journalist David Marchand said, and I quote, Grenada's reputation as a pariah country is well earned." end of quote. To date, Mr. Speaker, we are still trying to recover from such a shame. Mr. Speaker, it is also no secret that all islands in the Caribbean are oftentimes painted with the same brush. And though we boast of having one of the best due diligence process, can we really stand behind the integrity of our neighboring islands, Mr. Speaker? Do we really think it's a coincidence 
that visa restrictions are now applied to all Caribbean countries for certain places? Think on that. Two, diplomatic tension. Mr. Speaker, due to the unprecedented sanctions imposed by the European Union, member states are admonished to reject Russian's applications, Mr. Speaker. Countries like Cyprus and Malta, Mr. Speaker, where CVI programs accounts for a large percentage of their revenue, are left with a tough decision, and either choice will damage the country. So, Mr. Speaker, through you, I would like to ask and appeal to the honorable members. Open your eyes. Awaken from your slumber. Because according to the Jamaicans, every dog has his day and every puss is four o'clock. So today might be Cyprus and Malta, but five to 15 years down the road, this can also be Grenada. Mr. Speaker, as my colleague stated, Grenada has a very unique program in the sense that successful applicants have the opportunity to relocate to the U.S. through the E2 Treaty Visa. And this treaty has been in existence, Mr. Speaker, since 1989. We're talking about 24 years before CBI. Mr. Speaker, however, the President of the United States recently, as in last month, December 23rd of 2022, made amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act, which include changes to the E2 Treaty Visa rules, Mr. Speaker. This subtle act, Mr. Speaker, could be the start of future restrictions on the Grenadian passport and possibly and possible interruption, Mr. Speaker, in our trade between the United States as a result of this very same CBI program. Furthermore, honorable members, the relationship between Grenada and the United States is very critical, if you didn't know. Lest we forget, most of our banking is done through the United States. And Mr. Speaker, this amendment, Mr. Speaker, is merely a glimpse of future restrictions caused by the CBI program imposed by our main international suppliers. And we have America putting restrictions, Mr. Speaker. We don't know who else may place restrictions on us. In the words of Generation Z children, and I see a lot of them inside here, the pressure is getting worse. <laughs> Number three, Mr. Speaker, Political corruption due to competitive market. Price competition and product differentiation will increase as more Caribbean countries and other countries enter into the market. Countries may start accepting disreputable investors, Mr. Speaker, and risk losing their visa waiver status. Quality control, honorable members, will become an issue. This claim is supported by the following citizenship shock article, Mr. Speaker. Whereas St. Lucia is not issuing e-passport and has cut their processing time to 45 days. And we also have St. Kitts and Nevis making critical changes to their CBI program, Mr. Speaker. They're now offering a time offer of uh, 125,000 USD dollars, Mr. Speaker. But on the flip side, Dominica removed the addition of siblings and well, Bulgaria's CBI program is now closed. So we see where that is going. Mr. Speaker, this smells like a conducive environment for on the table deals, if you know what I mean. And Mr. Speaker, Grenada is no stranger. Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, Grenada is no stranger to political corruption. It only takes the right amount of money and, well, a suitable briefcase, but let's not go there. Order. Mr. Speaker, has my time ended? I beg for two minutes to wrap up my speech, please. Honorable Member, your time has just elapsed, but I am going to grant you your two minutes to wrap up. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Moreover, as my colleague stated, the money generated from this act goes into the NTF, the National Transformation Fund. But, Mr. Speaker, there seems to be nothing transformative about Grenada 
since the inception of the CDI program. Mr. Speaker, don't take my word for it. Walk on our excellent, excellent, excellent roads. Or take a stroll through our well-modernized town, Mr. Speaker, and you tell me. Our villages and communities have suffered dramatically due to the mismanagement, abuse, and lack of knowledge of allocating CDI funds. Mr. Speaker, Grenada was thriving before the implementation of the CDI program, and we will continue to strive after that. Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? No, Mr. Speaker. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, countries like Barbados and St. Vincent and the Grenadines who do not have CBI programs are doing just fine. And so can we, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, after all, we share the similar natural resources which we can utilize to boost our economy. Mr. Speaker, to sum up, some things should not be transactional. Given the high risk, citizenship and its attendant benefit should be zealously protected. Mr. Speaker, the points listed, Mr. Speaker, are all reasonable reasons to scrutinize Grenada CBI Act of 2013. We believe that strategic investment in various sectors and the fluidity of the monies, Mr. Speaker, would therefore boost our economy. And as we approach the big 50, as an independent nation, we urge the honorable members on the other side to make decisions that take us from a state of dependency to independence. I thank you. Honorable Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may I be given permission to quote throughout my speech? Permission. permission has already been granted, Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, in the year 2020, the world was taken by storm by a fella called COVID-19. Well, from large economies to small economies, the poor man to the rich man, everyone was affected. Small economies such as my beautiful Grenada was in a state of panic. The rest of the world was in shock. Mr. Speaker, I would have heard my members, my honorable members on the other side of the aisle mention COVID-19. We, the government, have the vision, and I'm going to show you how exactly. In the year 2020, Portugal was able to raise, and listen, 647 million euros during COVID while the world was on shutdown. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for St. David South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, I do not yield in the interest of time. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, that's 647 million euros, when converted to EC dollars, is exactly 1.9 billion EC dollars, which, when compared to our national budget in 2023, is just 1.3 billion EC dollars. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Um, Mr. Speaker, I do yield. Mr. Speaker, I have heard the Honorable Member speak about 640, how much ever million euros, but no source was stated. I would like the Honorable Member to elucidate, to make clear the source, or if he was there himself, let us know. Honorable Member, you may proceed by responding. I will respond and then proceed. Mr. Speaker, I am quoting from one of the most financially stable and reputable investment websites on the internet, right? They are providing stable investments for millions of people. So I continue with my speech. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I would suggest that it... Honorable Member for St. David South, Mr. Speaker, I stand on point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, I do not yield in the interest of time. Honorable Member, before, before you proceed, 
you were asked to provide a source. And we are still waiting on that source to be provided. That source was provided as imidaily.com. Thank you. You may proceed. Right. Mr. Speaker, as I stated earlier, that 1.3 billion EC that was projected for our budget to run a year, one country made that during the year of COVID. And that wasn't even the highest among they made. At one time, they made 847 million euros. Mr. Speaker, in that way, I would say to my honorable members across the aisle, to put that in your pipe and smoke it. Mr. Speaker, as the Minister for Physical Development, which is responsible for creating an environment that fosters sustainable social and economic growth, it is in the hands of me and my honorable members on this side of the aisle to show exactly how feasible our CBI program, regulated by the 2013 Act, is possible to be used in Grenada. We will target sectors such as education, agriculture, tourism, and community development. Mr. Speaker, I would have heard some statements made by my honorable members across the aisle about we targeting specific sectors. Yes, we are targeting specific sectors because they interlock with one another. There is no one sector that just stands alone. Mr. Speaker, first let us look at our education system. Our education system at present is from the 1800s. We are yet to come into today's way of teaching, where our teachers and students are shackled by the chalk and talk, where they sit and they talk, and the teacher talk and give notes. We as a government propose that we will put into place infrastructure where we can have proper internet connections within the classroom provide projectors so that teachers can implement their lessons very well. Currently, Mr. Speaker, we would like to Honourable also endeavor on... Honourable Member for St. David South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honourable Member, do you wish to yield? Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I do not wish to yield. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker... It is in this endeavor that we, the government, plan on implementing physical structures or facilities where we can train our nation youth in things such as automotive repair, electrical engineering, just to name a few. Mr. Speaker, we also would have seen that over the years our CBI program would have approved many projects such as hotels. We also want to implement a training center Honourable Member for St. David South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honourable Member, do you wish to yield? Mr. Speaker, I do not wish to yield, as I said, in the, uh, in the interest of time, and I will address my, my detractor statement soon. Mr. Speaker, in the hospitality sector, we need competent people. So we will train them in our newly built facilities where they learn things of how to work in hotels, customer management, all of these things. Mr. Speaker, we want to implement programs where our young people are employed into these various hotels and CBI projects, which would have been built to run these projects. And as I said, they would give that unique Grenadian hospitality with aspects of our cultural heritage. Honourable Member for St. Andrew Southeast. Mr. Speaker, I stand on a point of clarity. Honourable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I do not yield. You may proceed. Thirdly, Mr. Speaker, as an Honourable Member on this side would have alluded, the roads in terms of Grenada are terrible. Mr. Speaker, when we look at our farmers, our farmers have to work so hard, but to get to the land alone is so much problems. I would have heard my honorable member across the aisle saying, if something not broke, why fix it? Well, clearly, these ministers are, are behaving very hypocritical. For example, yesterday, me and the honorable opposition leader was traveling on a bus. The bus driver went down into a hole and disappeared off the road. The opposition leader jumped up and said, Oh, God, man, they have to fix these roads. So, Mr. Speaker, how could they claim that it is not broke 
when they are the ones complaining, are our citizens not worth fixing the roads for? Mr. Speaker, we'd have seen farmers protest, although it's not encouraged or endorsed. They would have planted pieces of fig trees in the middle of potholes, protesting. And we as a government are going to do something about it. Our road networks are like lifelines. It is where we are, it takes us from where we are to where we would like to be. Mr. Speaker, when we look at, at boosting our tourism industry, we have so many five-star hotels. However, Honorable Member for the Town of Greenville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I do not yield. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, we plan as the government to implement and to process applicants who meet the requirements of our security checks, as well as providing programs that take into consideration Grenada's natural, serene, beautiful scenery. We want to appeal to our investors as an escape from the hustle and the bustle of the first world countries by providing fresh air. Honorable Member for St. David South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of clarity. Honorable Member, do you yield? Mr. Speaker, I do not yield. So we would like to provide that feeling of fresh air, water, and the scenic view of this sun-kissed landscape in Grenada. Mr. Speaker, we the government intend on proving projects that will help Grenada stand out from the crowd of countries all across the globe. Mr. Speaker, it is also the goal of the government to be fully accountable to the citizens of Grenada as well as our investors. It, is come, it has come to the government's attention that there are grants funded of different projects, but so many times they fly under the radar. We, the government, have undertaken an initiative to document all approved CBI programs as well as showing the invest allowing investors to provide regular project updates to the Grenadian public, thus increasing safety and transparency for all parties. In conclusion, we as the government would like to stress that the CBI program is more than a viable means to provide revenue. To help. Honorable members of the opposition, in the interest of time, I would like to allow the member, the minister on the floor to complete his speech. Thank you. Honorable member, you may proceed. Right. So we plan to, the CBI program is more than a viable means to, pro, to provide revenue to help the... Mr. Speaker, may I be granted one minute to wrap up my speech. Honorable member, you are granted 45 seconds. Mr. Speaker, we want to fully develop the economy of Grenada to its full potential. As put well by Carl Levine, and I quote, we have a hope of success if we learn from our past mistakes and put together and come together to make the hard choices, end of quote. What that suggests is that our honor members on the other side must rise above political affiliations and come to the table with solutions, not problems. Mr. Speaker, if they cannot do that, then we see exactly why they are on the opposition side and not sitting on this side of, of the aisle. Mr. Speaker, I can hear the old folks, how the elderly used to say it. You can bring a donkey to the water, but you cannot make them drink. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are there any other contributions to this debate? Honorable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So you, I would like to thank the Honorable uh, members on the opposition for the very, very few valuable feedback of this resolution, to this resolution. I must say, it is specific sectors for a purpose. 
We are not redirecting for redirecting sake. We are not waving a magic wand and boom, a, ba a barrel of money fall from the sky. And it just spread across Grenada. It has to be specific. We need structures in place. That is why we have specific sectors, as I stated. We are investing also in the financial sector. So sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, or tourism, or tourism sector, or creative in economy will all benefit. And the spin-off effect will be great. Think about this. That $50, that $50 million we invest in agriculture, in the next five years, there might be a hundred million. You see, Mr. Speaker, the honorable member of the opposition spoke about benefits of the NFT. He speaks about achieving economic sustainability. Invest in renewable energy. But where are the funds coming from? We can use the funds generated through the CBI program to help go for economic sustainability, to help in, in also renewable energy. He lists benefits after benefits after benefits. But his teams are against, but his teammates are against it. It's like they want to play a job, job, Mr. Speaker, but they're afraid to get dirty with the oil. How can in addition, we have a Bible quota in our midst that states that the CBI program is not viable. But how can the CBI program not be viable when viable speaks about sustainability? We have seen the increase in revenue from the CBI program. And I must say, it is consistent. In not one year, the CBI program up the next year, we struggle to make our five dollars from the CBI program, Mr. Speaker. And also, I stand on a point of clarity, not for me, not for this government, it's for the people of Grenada because, yes, we are the government, but we need all the criticism that we can get. He was afraid, the honorable member was afraid to yield because he knew what he was saying was a set of lies. He also goes on to speak about not publishing any operations from the CBI, but I don't know if his glasses wasn't working properly, or it was blurry while he was doing the research, but if you look at our CBI program, we have been publishing our CBI operations. Matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, I must say, is we produce two reports every year. We are now planning to do four reports every quarterly. In that way, we will be more transparent to the people of Grenada. No, Mr. Speaker. I could have fallen down from the seat when I heard this um, specific honorable member said something. But I want to come across as being disrespectful, but this must be said. The honorable representative from the town of Grenville indicates that there are no interviews for these citizens. Mr. Speaker, I'm not surprised that that honorable member said that. Matter of fact, in an interview, I've heard that honorable member saying, and I quote, I am not quite familiar with the CBI program, but I am willing to do more research. Now, obviously, they will come up with these vacuous claims. If they are not, this they will come with these vacuous claims if they are not familiar with the program. So, you know what? For that, through you, I would like that. I would like to ask that honourable member to go home, do more research, then come back and give the valuable criticism that we need as a government. And also, with no interview part, that is a lie, Mr. Speaker. I want to be more here, but I have the, I have the act right here. Um, I would like to show the me that honorable member of Tongue of Grenville the act. You know what I will read it to say? It will be better. <laughs> and I quote, the committee may engage the services of one or more bodies or bo one or more persons or bodies which are independent, professional, and qualified to conduct due diligence check in respective of every applicant over 11 years of age. And the applicant may be required to attend an interview in Grenada or at an embassy or high commission of Grenada before any decision is made. Also, 
Another honorable member came up with a vacuous claim. With a vacuous claim. Three to four months is not enough to generate adequate funds. Mr. Speaker, I, as, I, as I say again, that member might have blurry glasses also while he was doing his stuff. Come on, go to the website, go to the fiscal reports um, that we publish as a Minister for Finance. You will see the adequate funds. Three to four months. Mr. Speaker, it is ludicrous. The CBI program has been there since 2013. I mean, <laughs> I went to, to college with that specific honorable member, but now I understand why they did not do maths. 13 to 2013 to present date. How that is three to four months. That is 10 years. The honorable member from St. Kitts, uh, sorry, <laughs> the honorable member from St. Andrews North East spoke about community development. I will repeat this. We can use the funds generated through the CBI program to help fund for the community development of our nation. Let that sink in. Also, they stated that we did not speak about other sectors. Now, <laughs> you might be laughing, but I'm being very serious here. It aches me to hear honorable members in this house come up with a bunch of lies. How can you say we did not talk about these sectors when we as a government clearly indicated the sectors that we are going to invest in and how it can benefit our Grenada? Our Grenada. I myself stated financial sector that will cause a spin-off effect to go through agriculture, manufacturing, and the list can go on. Also, a specific member made a bold claim about... Um, I will take this back. Send. All right. So the honourable member of Saint Kitts, I'm sorry, of Saint Andrew South, he spoke about Saint Kitts and Nevis. Are we Saint Kitts and Nevis? Do, they, do that honourable member need a map to see where we are? The mismanagement of the CBI program in Saint Kitts and Nevis has nothing to do with our CBI program operated in Grenada. So, and also, what if someone from if someone what also what if someone from Russia applies for citizen by investment to a program? Are all Russian citizens bad? No. They also said to that NFT benefits us through the CBI program. So also, yeah, thank you for agreeing with us that the CBI program is a viable means for creating revenue in this country. And I also must say this, the COVID-19 pandemic taught us to grow what we eat, agriculture, other sectors. They need equal treatment in terms of the, in terms of reinvesting funds into these sectors. We will target these sectors, but listen, Rome wasn't built in a night. What we presented today is only the start to diversifying investments through the CBI program. To address a certain honorable member, they stated about the risk and the probability of the CBI being exploited, but I must say that being basically being used by criminals. As I will say this again, our robust CBI committee ensures us that, these, that this program is not exploited by these thugs, Mr. Speaker. Yes, there might be a few risks. But should we close down a viable means for, of revenue? Because there's a risk. With this mindset, we should burn down Grenada because we have risk of hurricanes, we have risk of, of, of earthquakes. But what is important is how we mitigate against this risk. Also, um, after this sitting, I wish one of the um, honorable members to come and speak to me after to to explain to me why the Bulgaria CBI was closed, because that is quite a vague statement. That CBI program can be closed because of mismanagement of their CBI program. We are not Bulgaria. Our CBI program is not Grenada and Bulgaria Citizens by Investment Program. We have our own unique
citizen, citizen by investment program. Also, what about excellent, excellent, excellent roads? Funds generated through the CBI. And I will say it for the 1,000th time. Funds generated through the CBI program can be used to help benefit our roads and fiscal development. And, it's post and also, we have hotels being built, many beautiful hotels, five stars. The positive externalities of these hotels will develop our nation's roads, Mr. Speaker. But before I take my seat, I'd like to say this, and I say this with honor. We are planning on reopening our libraries. CBI funds will be used to help in the reopening of our library. The honorable members on the other side cry, vex about it, but we, our government, are putting things into work. We are making progress with our CBI. So when the library open, go there, do some research, then come back to this house and give proper critics. Instead of trying to retard the progress of this hard-working government. So yes, enjoy the view from that side of the table. Because the weight of, sorry, enjoy. So yes, enjoy that view from that side of the, of the parliament. Because your waiting have just begun. Thank you. Honorable members, the question is that the following resolution be agreed. Whereas Canadian citizens can travel without visa restrictions to more than 115 international and commonwealth countries, and whereas access to citizenship by investment is restricted by specific conditions around the world, and whereas the state of Grenada has no foreign income, wealth, gift, inheritance, or capital gains tax, and whereas exploration of viable means of economic development for the state of Grenada is prudent, and whereas it is necessary to ensure that all means of securing economic development are guided by relevant and carefully defined laws to ensure adequate and careful implementation, processing, monitoring, and ultimate effectiveness. Be it therefore resolved that CBI program, as regulated by the CBI Act of 2013, is a viable means for government to increase revenue. Be it further resolved that the revenue generated through the CBI program be targeted to specific sectors. As many as are in favor that the resolution be agreed, say aye. 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 Those of the contrary opinion say nay. Nay. I think the ayes have it. The eyes do have it. The resolution has been agreed. Adjournment. Honorable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that this honorable house be adjourned until the 13th day of March of 2022. Honorable members, the question proposed is that this honorable house stands adjourned until March 13th, 2023. Honorable member for the town of Grenville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before we adjourn, I firstly wish to congratulate all the youth parliamentarians on a job well done here today. And Mr. Speaker, as representative for the town of Grenville, I owe a duty to my constituents to bring to the fore areas of concern. 
And I rise to address an issue of national importance, but more specifically, an issue that has been plaguing the town of Grenville, that of the increased instances of vagrancy and homelessness. Mr. Speaker, it hurts me to say that it is no longer only young men we see on the, on the sides of the road. No, there are women and even entire families. And for some, this is the only life that they have known. Assistance has not been forthcoming. Mr. Speaker, of course, the causes vary from drug abuse to unemployment to, to poverty and so on. But however, one thing remains certain is that they are still citizens of this country. <clears throat> and so, I believe that it is in the best interest of this country that emphasis be placed on assisting and re rehabilitating these individuals. I mean, the food hampers and so on around Christmas times is nice. However, I believe that initiatives ought to be more intentional and geared specifically towards addressing this issue. Initiatives can include establishment of shelters whereby meals, a resting place, perhaps counseling and even skills training can be taught to these individuals. I look forward to hearing the proposals that the government has um, as to how they intend to rectify the issue of vagrancy and homelessness in my constituency. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for St. Andrew Southeast. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I cannot leave this house today without addressing a dire concern for Grenada. I see a need, and I'm sure my colleagues can agree with me, for laws for preferential treatment to our elderly citizens within the public and the private sector. While we can hope that morality would take precedence and someone would lend a hand to the elderly, the reality is this, that laws and rules need to be clearly set so that this can happen. Now, those who go before us have paved the way, and as their eyes and their limbs get dim, we must make home comfortable for them. I can appreciate that efforts have been made with, to implement programs such as a roving care geriatric program, but there is a need to do more. We have the Humani program for young persons struggling to get jobs. There are elderly persons who may have rich retirement age, but they are able to work and are willing to do so. Perhaps we can consider a program that provides jobs for elderly persons. Additionally, some dreams are not materialized when you are young, but they can become a reality for you when you are older. Just take for example, we have, I believe, five KFC franchises here. The founder of KFC, Colonel um, Sanders, he was 65 years old when this became a reality for him. Now, our elderly persons are often denied loans because of their age. We need programs that can help them sustain themselves. So even though when they were young, they could not achieve their dream, it can still become a reality for them because they are living and they have a right to pursue their dream just as everyone else. I would like to end with this verse from Proverbs 20, 29 that says, The glory of young men is in their strength. Gray hair, the splendor of the old. End of quote. Right? As you grow older, you become wiser. That is the ultimate goal. So you want to be proud of yourself when you are older. I remember during the pandemic, when we had preferential treatment for the elderly, they didn't have to wait in long lines. Right? And they were so proud to present their ID and say, I'm 65 or I'm 60. To get access, to get the things they need quickly and out. I believe they deserve that treatment every day. We need to end long lines for our elderly citizens. The public sector, the private sector, must have ample sitting for elderly citizens when they go to pay their bills. We must honor those who have paved the way before us. The hand that once guide us may someday need our hands to guide them.
Do we have any more contributions? Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand here today to acknowledge the honorable members on the other side, my fellow colleagues and distinguished guests. I am here to bring a, minor, a major concern to you all. This concern is the cost of living. In Grenada, we experience one of the highest rates of cost of living. So to you, I would like to know what measures or how can we deal with this situation? Mr. Speaker, as a youth, knowing the cost of living, Mr. Speaker, just for buying a bread, which is $4, Mr. Speaker, I, I would like a valuable explanation as to how, how Mr. Speaker, how, how would you go to a shop and purchase a bread for $4? Mr. Speaker, I would like to know what the government, or not the government, but I would like to know what we as a citizens can do to end this situation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are there any more contributions? If not, at this point, I would like to acknowledge the judges today who uh, judged this sitting. Mr. Patrick Simmons, former Minister for Youth and Sports. Ms. Carlene Purcell, the acting CEO of the CBI. And Mrs. Alana Felix Roberts, Senior Administrative Officer in the Ministry of Education youth, sport, and culture. Here I have the top debaters of today's sittings, and I would give, I would present the top three. I would, I would ask that you stand so that we can acknowledge you when your name is called. In third, we have Mr. Ishmael Lett, the government side. Second, we have Ms. Karina Blash. And in first, our top debater for today's sitting, we have Ms. Abigail Ellis. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate and commend the National League Parliamentarians on a job well done and for a very keen and competitive and interesting sitting today. I, I am sitting here and I would have enjoyed the sitting and I'm certain that everyone in the gallery would have done so as well. I believe it was one that was very, very well done. It was a wonderful sitting. Thank you for a great sitting today. Honorable members, the question is that this honorable house stands adjourned. As many as are of the opinion, say aye. 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 And those of a contrary opinion say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes do have it. The business of this National Youth Parliament of Grenada, Kariku, and Piti Martinik stands adjourned.
So I, I wish to retract just a bit, as we have the vote of thanks. My apologies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of the dignitaries who have graced us with their presence here today. Your attendance has made this youth parliament sitting a memorable and unforgettable one. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to all of the viewers in the gallery who have been with us from start to finish. Your presence has given us the motivation to continue to strive for excellence in our future endeavors. I would also like to extend my thanks to our facilitators who have worked tirelessly to ensure that everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Their hard work and dedication have not gone unnoticed, and we are truly grateful for all that you have done. Finally, I would like to extend a special vote of thanks to our lead facilitator and coach, Ms. Tessa Sincere. Her guidance, wisdom, and unwavering support have been valuable to us throughout this city. Her tireless efforts have enabled us to achieve great things, and we are truly grateful for everything she has done. In closing, I would like to thank everyone who has been a part of this youth parliament sitting. Your presence, support, and participation have made this an unforgettable experience, and we look forward to our next sitting on March 13, 2023. I thank you. Honorable members, the business of this, of this honorable host, the National Youth Parliament of 2023, stands adjourned until March 13, 2023.